Good afternoon and welcome to Webinar Wednesday. We're excited to have over 260 registered attendees for today's webinar, which is eligible for one credit from the ACI. Let's get started by giving one lucky attendee a Webinar Wednesday t-shirt for answering this trivia question. Today's sponsor, Scenario, is headquartered in New York. The Brooklyn Bridge spans which river? Answer now using the questions feature on your dashboard. While you're answering, I want to remind everyone that if you've missed any of our previous webinar webinars, you can watch them on our website, webinarwednesday.live, and you can still receive a CE credit as well. Okay, and let's see who the winner of our Webinar Wednesday t-shirt is, and it's congratulations, it's Matt Davis. Of course, the correct answer is the East River. Webinar Wednesday would like to thank our sponsor, Scenario. Scenario is the world's premier medical first IoT cybersecurity solution. They view cybersecurity as a standard part of patient care and provide healthcare delivery organizations with the insight and tools they need to secure clinical ecosystems and achieve long term scalable threat remediation without disrupting operations or the delivery of care. For more information, visit scenario.com. Our presenter today is Daniel Brody, co-founder and CTO of Scenario. Daniel, you may begin whenever you're ready. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for the introduction. I'm Daniel, as mentioned. Uh, I'm, have, uh, this, I'm the co-founder and CTO of Scenario. I've been in the cybersecurity field for over a decade, from PCs to mobile, uh, mobile devices, from research to development. Uh, and a couple of years ago, uh, me and my co-founder, Leanne, have decided to enter into the medical devices space. And basically what we saw is that there, the growing footprint of healthcare IoT devices. In the past five years, the number of IoT devices and hospitals has increased tremendously, over 62%. And 25% uh, of devices in hospitals are IoT devices. This means that if you go into a hospital, and you have a quarter of your devices not managed using your traditional IT solutions. Most organiza healthcare organizations are using IoT technologies to help them better manage patient care. And lastly, 75% of a hospital's network traffic is unmonitored. That means it's using healthcare protocols for communication from unmanaged devices, which means this is a huge black hole in healthcare organizations. And as hospitals grow and become and attempt to become more automated using more IoT uh, solutions, the management of them becomes a more crucial part, especially in these trying times such as today with uh, Corona uh, virus and other such stresses ha uh, happening on our healthcare organizations. And this is uh, where we came in to start of when we started developing our solution, which is to try and make sure healthcare's have a greater cooperation between both the IT and the biomed uh, departments in the organization. So we are a passive network solution uh, that are able to, that is able to see all your medical devices on your network, see any information about them, uh, anything from their serial numbers and the operating systems, their type, their purpose, and how they uh, and what risks they have in the organization. And this allows you both for the clinical engineers and uh, biomed engineers to be able to see in the required inventory information about them and for the IT to come and be able to see the risks in your organization from those depart from these devices. Now what we're here to talk about today is the medical device life cycle in terms of the IT uh, and security standpoint. Medical devices have a very complicated life cycle due to the uh, requirement of both maintenance, the complication of procurement, and the complication of their disposal. As such, they are they require, uh, as we've mentioned earlier, a lot of coordination between both the IT and the biomed team. So today, that's what we're going to be discussing. We're going to look at both the stages of the procurement, the maintenance, and disposal. We'll finish up with a, a short summary and a Q&A. So procurement, uh, this is something that, as we've, well, as we've mentioned, uh, is very crucial, uh, especially at this time with Corona, um, was procuring ventilators 
and understanding uh, how which devices are needed and where in the organization uh, you, you have a need for buying new devices in terms of, of, the, of the need of the department. And these are kind of the questions that organizations have today regarding that is like, how do we know if we need another type of, of if we need a new type of device? How do we know if we need more devices of the same type? How do you know if our current devices are being used efficiently, if they are being used across sites in a good way? Do we need to move devices across the different sites? Which departments rely on these devices? And also IT have a very important side here in terms of both policy and also can the network actually support uh, these devices? This is a, um, and this is where the alignments actually need to start from the procurement to the other stages. So we have a poll question here today, which is what is your top priority today? What are, uh, what are the priorities that your organization is, needs to handle in terms of the procurement? Okay, Daniel, we'll just give them a couple more seconds to give us their answers and I will close out the poll. Okay, righty ho, we have 37% uh, with a medical device, IoT inventory discovery, 28% for providing remote telemedical device support and 35% sourcing devices related to the COVID-19 crisis. Mm -hmm. So very, thank you. So very, um, so both, all, all three of those are very important as you've mentioned. We will be looking um, at all three of these in our presentation and hope to be able to see that what we, um, that what we'll discuss and we'll be able to uh, help with some of these priorities that we know healthcare are dealing with today. So if we're starting out with procurement, the different stakeholders within the organization that would be relevant for the uh, stakeholders our medical departments, which is important to understand what the device is going to be used for, which medical departments will use it, what they will be using it for. This is very, uh, this is, uh, comes hand in hand with the clinical engineering and the biomed, which we'll discuss in a minute around understanding how you, you can know how you build maintenance for these devices and, the, and their utilization in the organization. IT around security policy and IT policy for these devices. And lastly, business and board. Um, a lot of these devices uh, come from vendors. Some of these vendors will have that have uh, existing uh, existing uh, procurement licenses with the healthcare organization, and that would be something that would be taken into consideration when purchasing these devices. So, if we're starting uh, looking at the medical de uh, the medical departments and the biomed, utilization is a key factor there. One of the important things to understand is how we develop ROI profiles for these devices. Do we know if these devices are being used up to their potential? Do we know where there is stress in the organization regarding these devices? Different devices will require different ROI profiles for their utilization. Some devices, such as patient monitors, it would be interesting to know how many are being used during a specific day. If the patient monitor is not necessarily being used all day uh, by a specific patient, IV pumps are a similar device and also ventilators. Other devices such as radiology devices, the, um, the understanding the stress on them would be more in terms of the number of patients they can service during a day and being able to see if certain devices are being servicing more patients than others and understanding why that is. Being able to understand efficiency of devices is usually something that's reserved for the larger devices rather than uh, such as MRIs and CTs rather than the smaller ones like IV pumps and patient monitors. So this is, again, very important to kind of start out by understanding how we measure devices in the organization, how we see it in a cross-organizational standpoint. A lot of customers that we're working with, they are able to look at different departments and different sites and being able to move devices between them more efficiently and thereby reducing their need to, to purchase devices. We have another poll question. So, we know measuring utilization of devices is a very complicated subject. We we're interested in hearing how the audience measures device utilization currently. Okay, Daniel, we'll just give them a couple more seconds to cast their vote and then I will close out the poll. Okay, I'm gonna close it. 
Okay, we have 67% uh, at manual assessment conducted by hospital biomed staff, 8% of outsourced teams, and 25% of automated inventory software. All right, thank you very much. So 67% for manual utilization, that is very high. That is probably something that is, is requiring quite a bit of work. With the customers that we're working with, understanding how to develop these, utiliz these utilization metrics and being able to have that affect procurements is very critical. You want to be able to be able to have a look across your organization and know what percentage of your of your devices are being utilized at a certain time, being able to get a certain average, and being able to look at the peaks over over time. How many of what hours are they being used over time? So this is an example of a med, of a patient monitor where you want to see more departmental, more high level view, and be able to base on that and see that you have a 40% uh, unutilized devices in your organization. And you have to decide that based on how much buffer you want in terms of your devices. Like we mentioned for radiology, you'll want to be able, usually radiology based devices, you want to be able to uh, compare different uh, models or different uh, devices in your organization across the same type and be able to see which ones are operating more efficiently and less efficiently. Maybe make, maybe reroute patients from specific devices to others so that you'll be able to handle the stress on your organization in a much more holistic way. The other team that's more that's very important, as we mentioned, is the IT. The IT is more around policy and, uh, enforcement on these devices. So how do we implement these devices from a security perspective? The first question has to be around the actual vendor of the device. Is this a vendor that releases security patches on a timely matter? Does the vendor uh, uh, comply with, allow you to comply with the, uh, with the security policies of your organization? Does this specific model of device have open vulnerabilities that are not being taken care of? These are questions using a solution like Scenario or any other threat intelligence solutions that you would be critical to be able to answer before you purchase a device. Even if you decide to go forward with purchasing that device with these security uh, problems, it would be important in terms of understanding the cost of protecting from those security risks in the future. Does a device allow compliance with organizational security policy depending on how the device can be configured or protected? So, there are, uh, the MDS2 form is a, a crucial form in terms of getting information from this um, about the devices. Uh, potential issues can include patching strategies. Does a vendor allow you, the, the hospital to patch the device by itself, or does it require to vet the patches for the devices by, uh, beforehand? Does the device come with the endpoint protection, or does a vendor allow the hospital to install its own vendor protect, um, endpoint protection? Does the device come with default passwords and can the hospital change those default passwords? And lastly, and not always, this information can come from MDS2. Some of it needs to come from technical documentation of the device, for example, vendor connections. A lot of devices have connections to vendors for maintenance. This is something that would be needed to know beforehand so you can make sure that you have the proper security in place, tools in place needed to protect these devices. Now, as you mentioned, some of these devices that are being released and they're not being handled with security, they're not being built with security in mind, you will need to ensure compliance, not by the device, but through compensating controls. This can include firewall rules uh, or NAC rules, basically a form of segmentation or protection. And this would need, this would just be something that would be important to know beforehand to make sure that those costs are built into the, under, to the procurement process. So MDS2 form, one of the things that Scenario does with it is we have digitization around it. So you can see beforehand about any device that's being procured, the different, uh, those different questions, as I'm, the question that I mentioned around anti-malware software or whether the password, default passwords can be changed uh, or patching of the OS. These are questions that are um, taken from our uh, large MDS2 repository and they can be searched on for devices. And they can uh, and can be used also later during maintenance of the devices, which brings us to maintenance. So, 
as we mentioned, the second stage of maintenance is an ongoing stage. It is something that needs to be continuously being done on devices. Some of our actions of maintenance are more of a annually thing or a biannually uh, event that, you need, that you're going to take care of the devices. Some of them need to be done continuously. But the main difficulty with maintenance of uh, medical devices is the need to take into consideration not affecting patient care as much as possible and being able to understand that a lot of these operations maintenance needs to also take into consideration the availability of these devices and being able and the availability of taking them out of operation so that they will be able to be maintained for these uh, offline required operations. These are just some actions of maintenance on medical devices that we've that we've seen that are crucial from the customer that we're working with. There are obviously some more that might be re more relevant also in terms of uh, taking care of more clinical aspects or medical aspects of devices. The initial critical aspect is discovery. You need to make sure you know which devices you have on your network. You need to know what model they are, what vendor they are. You need to make sure you're doing this automatically. You need to make sure you, this is something that you are continuously up to date on. You need to know where they are on your network, which site they're at. This is something that every customer we've worked with had gaps between where they thought the, their amount of devices were to where they were. Second of all is making sure that that uh, understanding, that view of your asset inventory is consistent across your organization through integration. You need to make sure that your asset management, your IT tools, your clinical engineering tools, your workflow tools, all of them have the same coherence view in terms of your organization. You need to make sure that when uh, clinical engineers are scheduling their asset management for the assets in the organization, they know on which assets they're doing it. They're knowing they're not missing assets on the way. This is a this is something that we have not found a customer that has not had difficulty in handling. Um, this uh, this is something that is. Again, we've seen all, a lot of customers are doing manually. We're, uh, let's open this up for a poll and see how do you currently manage your device visibility and inventory. Hey, Daniel, we'll just give them a couple of seconds again, and then I will close out. Okay. Righty ho. I'm going to close the poll now. And we have 23% uh, at automated assessment tools, 42% at manual device assessments, and 35% I don't measure. All right. So that means that from the audience that we, we've had the polling here, most of, most of the audience does not have any automated way of making sure that when you're doing maintenance of devices, you're doing it in an automated way and you're making sure to cover all the devices in the organization. An example from that we've had is a, um, our people that uh, from a customer that we've worked with where they've had medical devices that they were perceived to be lost and we were able to see them on the network. This, this has two aspects of it. First of all, obviously through procurement. If you want to make sure that if you're going back to the previous section, of procurement, you want to make sure you actually know how many devices you have your organization. But more critically around maintenance, these devices did not get their scheduled maintenance. This means these devices are connected to patients and did not have the required maintenance needed to make sure they're operating properly. So once you know which devices you have, once you know that you need to maintain them and you have a proper plan and doing maintenance around the different types of devices, you need to be able to schedule them, schedule the maintenance. As we said, some of these maintenance steps require taking the device out of circulation. To be able to do that, you need to be able to know when they're utilized and when can they be taken out to be, uh, to, to be taken care of. Uh, certain devices are being used 24 seven. Other devices would have downtime, which would be more relevant based on which department they're in. Another thing is being able to understand what your percentage is in terms of buffer. Can you take 20% of the devices out for maintenance or 40% of the devices out for maintenance? Again, required based on the understanding how they're being utilized across your organization. 
one of the most common ways of doing IT maintenance is doing patch management. As more and more vulnerabilities are being released on devices, more and more updates are being released and vendors are, being, are becoming more responsive and releasing uh, patches in a more timely manner, not necessarily timely enough, but still better than they used to, uh, it requires taking devices out and doing that, um, that patch management. We've mentioned previously the MDS2 guidelines around that, but you also would be required to know when these patches are being released um, and, and be able to supply those patches. There are usually two different kinds of patches. There's OS patches, so a lot of devices are running Windows, and they would be have patches being released by Microsoft. And some of these devices have firmware patches, which, would, which are usually only released by the vendor. For the OS Windows patches, sometimes a vendor will allow you to install them uh, without their uh, vetting process, and sometimes they require that the vendor vet each patch before it is being installed. So now that you know, if we'll take, for example, patch management, if you know which devices on your network, and for that you will need what we mentioned earlier, the, um, the in-depth inventory, knowing which devices you have, what OS or what firmware version they're running, which patches they need to go through. Through the understanding their utilization and scheduling, you know how many devices can you take out and what time you can take them out to do the patch management. Then you can understand and build a proper project for this. So you know that you should take care of these devices and you can take out a certain percentage to apply the patches and, and how many patches you can apply per week you will be able to know how long this process will take you. And again, with having an up-to-date view of your devices in your organization, you're able to make sure that these devices um, are being patched and monitored in real time. So as you mentioned, when you wanna go and um, take devices out for patching, you wanna be able to make sure that you can find those times where the devices are not being utilized as much, where taking them out will affect patient care the least. The two last steps that we want to talk around maintenance is policy validation and segmentation. So for policy validation, it is something that you want to do continuously. Um, the, a main reason would be compliance. When you have those uh, external or internal audits, you want to make sure that you, that is not a rush that's being done at the last minute for the audit. If you need something that you can be do, you can do at real time, get a reporting on, get alerting on, this will allow you to make sure that this is uh, going through the needed policy validation about these devices before audit is not a painful process and it is something that is being done continuously. Um, actions that are needed to be done are such as con con certain configurations. As we mentioned, devices coming with default passwords, you wanna make sure continuously that these devices do not have default passwords or do not have weak passwords. Uh, you wanna make sure uh, that you can monitor when the vendor is accessing the device for maintenance. Every customer we've worked with had devices connecting to the vendors for maintenance. This can affect patient care. You want to be able to get the visibility into that and be able to set policy around it. Know which devices are connecting to the vendor. How are they connecting? Using which protocol? What actions are happening over those connections? And making sure that you are aware of them and that you can uh, apply policy about them as well. And lastly, this is something that we've seen happen with a lot of customers is a lot of these devices have additional information which might not be possible to get from a passive network solution such as um, our default uh, deployment method. And there's a, um, ad additional information that is interesting from the device. For that, there is usually a, an active probing session, something that, again, our solution can provide and can be done as part of the annual maintenance cycle be able to do things like port scanning, getting a more in-depth understanding of risk on the device and other such actions that are needed. Sometimes, as we mentioned, devices cannot have their policy, uh, cannot be made to comply with the organizational policy. And as such, they need to be protected or, uh, or have a, 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 com a uh, mitigation applied to them. This is such a segmentation. Segmentation is not necessarily a one-time thing. It is a continuous thing of making sure that your organization is properly segmented based on the needs of, uh, of the organization. 
So by taking devices, for example, which have default passwords, which cannot be modified, being able to segment them off into a separate part of the network is crucial for being able to protect those devices and making sure that only the people who need to be able to connect to those devices can. This is something that should also be done regardless of risk mitigation, because you do not know when a vulnerability or when a risk would be released for a device. And that for that, you want to make sure that you are uh, ready for that. So taking critical devices and segmenting them beforehand will allow you to make sure that your devices are ready for when, uh, for when uh, a new risk is released. So here's an example of devices, which will have the two types of uh, actions that um, two of the types of actions that we discussed earlier. The first run of legacy OS, devices running old OSs. And as mentioned, some vendors will allow you to uh, release uh, upgraded, um, upgraded versions of, their, of the operating system for their devices, which will allow you to upgrade them. And by monitoring devices running the outdated operating system, you're able to make sure that you have a process for upgrading them. And some vendors will not allow you to upgrade to the operating system, and then those devices will need to be segmented. Secondly, devices which have services with default passwords, as mentioned. So being able to see those devices, seeing those passwords, and being able to make sure that those devices' passwords are changed. And also with vendor, you want to be able to get a look on the vendors who are accessing your organization, at what time they're accessing the organization, what models are they using? Uh, are used are uh, used to access organization and being able to set policies to make sure that devices are only connecting to the vendors at the times that you want them to connect at during off hours, for example, or during the weekend. The last stage is disposal. So disposal is a very important part of also procurement for devices. At the end of the day, you're procuring devices usually to replace. Uh, not only, but um, to replace outdated op devices or uh, devices that whose warranty get, um, went out, and that that is something that is a uh, core process, core stage of the process. So there are usually two main questions that need to be answered for disposal of devices. The first one is around PHI. A lot of these devices are receiving and sending PHI. Being able to understand which devices are sending which types of PHI is crucial for making sure that the disposal process is appropriate based on the policy of the organization. This is something that a lot of times is brought up as part of the MDS2 or other vendor documentation, but it is not something that you would necessarily want to count on that. You would want to be able to also get that based on the actual behavior of the devices in the organization. Additionally, is being able to understand the connectivity of the devices. These devices are connected to different entities in the network. Being able to make sure that you know which devices are connected to which servers um, and which device, other devices are connected to one another will allow you to make sure that when you take a device out to dispose of it, you can know the effect of it on the rest of the network and on the rest of the devices. So here you can see being able to actually see which, device, which PHI data devices are being sending and receiving and changing your policy of disposal on these devices based on the data that it sends or receives. Secondly, the connectivity. So here you can be able to see that being, uh, the devices and how they're connected to the various entities in the network. And being able to see that that interface engine is very crucial for which devices on the network and being able to know uh, based on if you, which devices you remove and how they would affect other devices near them. Um, okay, so as we mentioned, these uh, the different stages that we have in the procurement process are around, uh, in the maintenance process is around procurement, is around maintenance, and is around disposal. To do that, you need a solution which is automated, which can see the inventory in real time, can see the behavior that's happening in your network in real time, which can give you information about devices, about the vendors, uh, and beforehand, after you also you've been purchased them and they're in your network, and lastly disposal before you want to remove them to see 
how they are affected and connected in your network and through the data that goes through them so they can affect how you want to dispose of them. Let's open it for uh, questions. Okay, uh, yeah, we have some, Daniel, and I will start with the first one is, um, I'm a biomed who started to shift to remote work because of the corona crisis. How would an automated solution accommodate me working from home? So thank you, uh, it's a great question. Uh, especially with the coronavirus, what we are seeing with a lot of hospitals is that they're sending their IT departments from, to work from home. They are reducing considerably the staff that they are allowing in the organization. Using an automated solution will allow you to be able to see a lot of the information and do a lot of the processes that you would need to do physically, being able to see the configurations of devices, being able to get information about them and see their behavior, and do all that remotely without actually having to be go physically near the device and uh, take and interact with it physically. Okay, so in in a worst case emergency scenario scenario, how can this kind of product help me locate equipment and how fast? Um, and let's say I have to set up a field hospital with a hundred ventilators and smart beds, etc. Would this kind of tech help me keep track of all my off-site equipment too? Yeah, that's a great question. That's something we're working with uh, quite a few customers now um, that they're setting up for handling the coronavirus and the stress that it will put on their organization. This, the, a lot of the integrations that we do with the various entities, with the various uh, solutions in the hospital, whether it's the wireless access point, whether it's the real-time location services, the clinical engineering systems, um, such as CMS or asset management and inventory, allow you to be able to keep that holistic view of where devices are in the organization, based on their location, based on which site they're at, based on their network location, and kind of make sure that that view is consistent across your organization to make sure devices are not getting lost, to make sure devices are being maintained properly. So for example, and this is uh, something we've worked with as a customer, is making sure that devices that are taken to a field hospital uh, in the parking lot of the hospital are being brought back for recharging and being able to do that with a solution like ours that they can uh, that know that where the devices are in the organization based on those integrations. Okay. Um, obviously, the biggest issue right now with the coronavirus crisis is time. So, how lo how long would implementing a solution like this take? Um, and if I'm dealing with moving devices and patients from one location to another, how long would it take for me to get the information I need to make informed decisions? So that's a good question. The deployment of the uh, solution is uh, um, is very quickly. It's um, as, as just as a deployment of any other passive network solution which connects to existing network infrastructure. Once it's connected, you are able to get the value from the product, whether it's inventory, whether it's uh, seeing the devices, seeing the risks, almost immediately. We usually recommend a learning time of a week or two, but it is something that is not required. And it can see devices that they're moving from place to place and uh, in real time. This will allow you to see the devices and their utilization as right, they're being used and as they're being mo uh, moved from place to place um, without needing to wait or do manual work to be able to give you that information that you need, whether it's utilization or whether it's the acid, in acid information in inventory. Okay, that's great. Um, another question here is, uh, Veterans Affair has a policy to pre-procurement policy. Does your company software or product have similar tools to define, to define right devices for hospitals? Could you repeat that? I'm sorry. Veterans Affairs has a policy to pre-procurement policy. Does your company software or product have uh, such similar tools to define the right devices for these hospitals? So uh, I'm assuming this means around specific vendors and, and so forth. So we have a lot of information about vendors in our product as part of our scenario live solution. This will allow, can uh, help information, re give information regarding uh, procurement of devices. I do not believe um, 
we have anything that's specific for uh, Veterans Affair or specific for uh, pre procurement licenses, but it is obviously something that can be dependent on the vendor and the model, um, specifically, but mostly usually the vendor. Um, but, I think, but I don't think we have anything specific for that. Okay. Um, this is going back to one of the polls. The second poll is critical to us. How can we automate to discover connected devices? So basically by having a solution such as ours on the network, we are able to see all devices as they are communicating on the network and they will automatically discover those connected medical devices, allowing you to see them in real time, allowing you to have that information Synced up um, from everything from the asset management tools to the IT tools such as NACs, firewalls, uh, um, CMMS systems, and so forth. And all that's needed is just to plug in the device and uh, let it detect those devices. And they will be able to say everything from the type, the model, serial numbers, uh, the vendor, their purpose in the organization, how they're communicating, and to who they're communicating. And, obvi and obviously the risks, as we mentioned, the risks that they have configuration required on them, uh, the PHI being sent, who they're communicating with, are they communicating to the web and so forth. Okay, that's great. And another question is here, how are you seeing server activity and, and where is the scenario devices located? Our, um, we, our, our um, appliance is located in the core switches. So that means we will see all the traffic going through the core switches. And as such, we will see server activities in terms of the medical devices connected to those servers. It includes everything from interface engines, packs, uh, RIS, RIS systems, LIS, RIS systems, um, also EMR systems and the communications from them to the medical devices. And we're able to show which servers are connected to which devices and how that, uh, and how that communication affects one another. We've, as we've seen in one of the previous slides, or an interface engine on the various different devices that were connected to that in interface engine. Additionally, we're also uh, connected connectivity engines and seeing the devices that are connected through connectivity engines to the network. Okay, that's great. Now, now, do you think that after this scenario we are living in at the moment, automated solutions will have a bigger impact on the way we are used to work now? That's a great question, and I think the question to that would have to be yes. I think this is a sadly not a training exercise, but a uh, a, a real life scenario. But of it will help the whole healthcare industry be able to understand what it means to work automated, to work in a way that is require uh, um, less personnel, uh, less on site uh, to take care um, personnel to take care of the manual labor work and being able to make sure that uh, we will be able to handle uh, in our healthcare additional stress with not as much pain and being able to make sure that onboarding of new devices is something that can be done in a much quicker way. Understanding the state of the hospital in terms of stress and being able to know which departments are under stress in an automated way based on utilization is also something that I think hospitals are gonna to have to learn how to do now and hopefully we'll take that knowledge for further. Um, I think also for um, for medical devices, one of the things I think we're going to be seeing is that uh, uh, more telemedicine. And I think in one of the poll, and as we mentioned, one of the poll questions we've seen, we've seen also quite a bit people here in the audience looking at that. If more telemedicine happens, there's also going to be a need of monitoring that. That is also something that we're looking at is being able to look at the traffic of devices going into the healthcare from home devices and being able to provide visibility on that as well. Okay, that's great. So another question is, how would the MDS2 information impact on risk calculation and device usage policies? So um, that's a good, that's a great question. One of the main um, important aspects of risk is not only how uh, dangerous it is, but how it impacts the organization. And we're using that MDS2 digitization that I mentioned to help us calculate risk in a way that will that is more specific for the hospital. Uh, that is also based on the utilization. 
So that in that way, risk is able to uh, be tailor made for the hospital also in terms of the impact of that risk on that device. So a device which is more critically used in the organization, the impact will be higher and the, therefore the risk will be higher. Or a device where the MDS2 uh, specifies on the amount of M, uh, EPHI that the device saves on it would be high. So the impact on that in the organization will be high as well. Okay, and actually following on from that, there's a question. What is the MDS2 guideline? The MDS2 guideline is a uh, document uh, used by uh, clinical engineers to help them understand uh, medical devices and their purpose. Uh, and their, um, uh, and ba it's basically a document released by the vendors about medical devices to be able to specify their uh, things around IT and some clinical engineering configuration requirements there around security and policy enforcement. Uh, this will allow us to, uh, this allows hospitals to make sure they understand uh, what, P, what data or what EPHI is saved on the device itself. Um, any configuration that's needs to do on the device um, regarding updates, regarding uh, um, uh, endpoint protection that's installed on it and so forth. Okay, so, so so what sort of information does Scenario take from the wire to inventory devices? Well, we take um, everything that the devices allow us to take. And that it means everything from serial numbers, models, the vendors, the OS versions, firmware versions, uh, which services are open and available on the devices, um, uh, which type of uh, data um, does the device send or receive, such as a PHI type. Um, and uh, any, any other information we can provide, which the ICU departments, which departments is being used as, for example, ICU. Okay. Uh, another question here is: When it comes to new vulnerabilities like Blue Keep come out, does this service highlight the vulnerable de devices? Yeah, as new, as new vulnerabilities come out, we are able to uh, alert people using the system and they will be able to get it in their dashboard or in the events of the system of new devices that will have these new risks. These new risks will be able to have different mitigation steps. For example, if it's a risk where the uh, availability is to patch the system um, or a risk where a configuration change is needed and be able to show that to the, um, to the uh, hospital. And, and then devices which cannot be handled using patching or configuration, having compensating controls such as segmentation be applied on the device to protect that device from that risk from the rest of the organization. Okay, um, and just a general question here. What, what do you mean by segmentation? So, as devices, as uh, more and more devices are being put on the network, the uh, best practice that is being considered nowadays is to separate them from the rest of the devices on the network. So that means let's taking things like IV pumps, patient monitors, uh, dialysis devices, ventilators, and putting them in a separate part of the network from the IT, regular IT devices to protect both those devices from the IT and protecting the IT and um, making sure that also the IT devices can't be infected from a uh, malware coming in from those devices. This is an IT or a networking um, solution that is usually employed in hospitals using NACs um, and or internal firewalls uh, and is uh, done as a, should be done as a continuous process in the organization to make sure that over time, more and more devices can be put in their own separate grouping from the rest of the network. These, uh, these groupings should be done based on the vulnerability of those devices and the impact of in terms of security. So for example, you might take devices which are critical for patient care and put them in their own segments to make sure that they can be protected from the rest of the network. Okay, that's great. Uh, another question here is, is there a way to integrate a CMS system such as TMS Accruant with a solution such as yours? I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear that. Could you repeat that? 
Yeah. Is there a way to integrate a CMS system such as TMS Accruant with a solution such as yours? Uh, yes, we integrate with most CMS systems on the network um, uh, that are available in hospitals, and that allows you to make sure that your uh, uh, your visibility is consistent across your inventory is consistent across your different teams in your organization, whether it's the biomed, the IT, um, or anything that the CFO might be using to kind of manage your different uh, understanding of devices. Okay, um, and another question here is, how can your solution enhance collaboration between Biomed and IT? So our solution is a, uh, it's built from the ground up to help collaboration between Biomed and IT by allowing to uh, make sure that they are speaking the same language, both in terms of the inventory, making sure they know which, that they're aligned in terms of which devices they have, both in terms of the actions needed on those devices, both in terms of giving them both the visibility of the configuration needed to be done on those devices, their effect on the organization, how they're being used, the utilization, and basically making sure that they all have the same consistent view in terms of different parameters of those devices. Okay. Um... Um, we, it looks like we've got about one more question here. Um, do you need just, a... Let me just add one more thing to the previous question. We also, the system, is, uh, as we saw in the beginning, is also uh, customizable, allowing different teams to have their different views separately. So clinical engineers can have their own dashboards and their own views, and the IT can have their own dashboard and their own view into the information that's important to them. Great. Sorry to interrupt you there. Sorry. Um, do, do you need a physical server in every site? And what about emergency off-site devices like field hospitals? Can their communication also be tracked by the system? So that is very dependent on, hosp on the hospital networking the infrastructure. What we usually do is we have a, um, an appliance or two per site. And what we usually do is we can have an additional uh, temporary appliance for off-site uh, if needed, or uh, have the off-sites routed through the main site of the hospital, and then we will see that in traffic there. Uh, it is usually not something that is uh, a big problem, and it is something that is usually manageable uh, by just adding another appliance as needed. Okay, that is great. Um, that looks like the last of the questions, Daniel. So uh, we can wrap up there. So thank you so much, Daniel, for a great and informative webinar. And thank you again to today's sponsor, Scenario. Uh, just a reminder that the post-webinar survey and certificate process is automated. So the survey link will be included in the follow-up email, which you'll receive in about an hour's time. Once you've completed the survey, you'll be able to download your certificate immediately. One lucky attendee will win an Amazon gift card for completing the survey. And if you have any questions, please contact us at webinar at mdpublishing.com. For more information about all our upcoming webinars, please visit our website, webinarwednesday.live. So thank you once again to everybody who's joined us today. Um, enjoy the rest of your day, stay safe, and we hope to see you next time.